Hello guys, my name is Dan and in today's video I'm going to show you how to build a very powerful but silent computer that can handle anything from video editing to gaming. This is also going to be my personal computer, so let's begin. For this build you will need a static free surface. There are special anti-static mats that you can buy, but I personally don't have one, so I just used the desk behind me, which is made out of wood and I didn't have any problems. The only tool that you will need is a multi-bit screwdriver, but a pair of side cutters and a parts tray will help. The CPU that I chose is one of the best available and is very powerful. I'm talking about the 5820K, an i7 Haswell Extreme Edition from Intel. This CPU has 6 cores and 12 threads with a 3.3 GHz base frequency and a 3.6 boost. This CPU is unlocked so I will overclock it a bit later. If your budget allows it, you can replace this with a 5960X if you need more cores. Uh, but be prepared to pay for it because this CPU is pretty expensive. Lift the first retention arm on one side, then the second retention arm on the other and now you can lift up the socket cover. Hold the CPU by the edges and identify the corner with the triangle. Align that with the triangle on the motherboard socket. Place the CPU in with no force, lower the cover and put the retention arms back in reverse order. Because the CPU and motherboard support quad-channel DDR4 memory, I chose a 16GB 2400MHz uh, Ripjaw 4 kit from G-Skill DDR4 is pretty expensive at this moment, but when the prices go down, I still have 4 empty slots to add more RAM if I need it. Start by pulling back the tabs on the grey RAM slots, then make sure that the notch on the RAM matches with the notch on the socket. Then press equally on both ends until the tabs snap back in place. When it comes to cases, there are a lot of options, but because I want my PC to be quiet, I opted for a silent optimized case from Fractal Design the Define R5 with a window. This is a great case for me because it has a very simple yet elegant design. It's very spacious, it comes with two quality 140mm silent fans and it has front and bottom dust filters. The most important aspect of this case is that almost every panel has a special noise dampening material which absorbs some of the noise. Start by taking the side panels off and put them somewhere safe. Then also remove the fans and hard drive cages because we are going to install a radiator in the front. When I selected the motherboard I had again a couple of options but in the end I chose the ASUS X99S because it has everything I need and the white accents from the motherboard go well with the white accents from the case. Start by installing the rear I.O. panel, press firmly in every corner to make sure that it's in place then slowly lower your motherboard and place it on the integrated standoffs. Then secure it with the 8 screws found around the board. Now that the CPU and motherboard are in place, let's talk about the CPU cooler. Because I want to overclock the CPU and I still want to get low temperatures in my system, I chose an all-in-one liquid cooler from Corsair, the H100i. Start by mounting the radiator in the front with the included screws. Then install the two 140mm fans that came with the case in front of the radiator and the two 120mm fans that came with the cooler on the other side. This is called a push-pull setup because a set of fans is pushing the air into the case while the other set of fans is pulling the air. This will result in better cooling and lower temperatures. Now, because I moved one fan from the back of the case to the front and used it for the radiator, I will need to buy one additional fan. I chose a silent optimized fan from Fractal Design to match the others. But unfortunately this fan did not arrive on time and you will not see it in the video. Just so you know that I plan on installing it in the back of the case as an exhaust. Now that the radiator and fans are in place, it's time to install the heatsink on the CPU. The thermal paste is already pre-applied and all you have to do is to tighten 4 screws, one in each corner. Try to work in an X pattern to get an even distribution of pressure. 
Well, almost everything is installed, let's talk about the power supply and cables. The power supply that I chose is from EVGA, fully modular 750 watts with an 80 plus gold efficiency and an eco mode that does not spin the fan unless it reaches a certain load. Install the power supply with the fan facing down, this way it will pull fresh cold air from outside the case. I made a small mistake here and I installed it the wrong way but I soon realized and I reversed it. If you have a modular power supply it's going to be pretty easy to obtain a clean look because you simply don't connect the cables that you don't need. But if you don't have a modular power supply it's going to be a bit harder but still not impossible. Start by connecting the 24 and 8 pin cables to the motherboard. Now is the time to also connect the GPU and SATA cables to the power supply for later use. Next, connect the front power and reset switches as well as hard drive activity LEDs. Continue with USB 2, front audio and USB 3 connectors. And finally, connect all the fans to the motherboard or the included fan controller in the case. Now that I'm talking about fans, I want to mention that it's important to have a positive air pressure. What I mean by that is to have more air going into the case than air going out. So you can achieve this by having more fans uh, in the front that fans at the back or have the front fans uh, run at a higher RPM than the ones on the back. This will ensure that no dust is gonna get in and keep your system clean for a long time and also ensure proper cooling. For the OSM programs I chose the EVO 850 250 gig SSD from Samsung because of its great and constant performance. And for storage I chose a 1TB Western Digital Blue for games, movies, photos and so on. The SSD has a special mounting place in the back of the case and because I removed the hard drive cages to create space for the radiator I mounted the hard drive on the bottom of the case and secured it with a couple of screws and some rubber grommets to reduce vibrations. Don't forget to connect the power and data cables. Now I know that I could have installed the radiator on the top and still keep the hard drive cages in the front, but that means that I have to open the system up and remove the top module vents. Uh, this can potentially make the system a bit noisier and also the top slots don't have a dust filter. I only have one hard drive, so I'm pretty happy with the setup that I have for now. For the GPU I chose a GTX 970 from EVGA Super Clocked Edition with ACX 2.0 cooling. It's a very good graphics card for the money. I would have chose a 980 but that is almost double the price of the 970 and my budget was not enough for it. But this is going to be more than enough for gaming and it's also going to be very good with video editing especially in Premiere Pro because it has 1664 CUDA cores helping with rendering. This GPU also has a fanless mode uh, that will not spin the fans until it reaches 60 degrees making your system quieter. To install the card simply remove the two thumb screws and the PCIe cover. Then align the card with the slot and push down. Lastly put the two thumb screws back to secure the card in place. Don't forget to connect the two 6 pin connectors from the power supply. Now that everything is in place it's time to clean up a bit. At the back of the case bundle the cables together and use the included zip ties and velcro strips to secure them to the case. All that is left to do now is to install the operating system and to run some benchmarks. To test the system I used Cinebench, Crystal Diskmark, uh, Unigen Heaven and Unigen Valley. I also spent some time trying to overclock the system and managed to get it to a stable 4.5 GHz from the base 3.3. Let's see the results. The temperatures are very good. At idle the CPU temperatures are about 25 degrees and about 45 degrees under load. 
Now these are the CPU temperatures, but you can also look at the individual cores. And the hottest core reached a maximum temperature of 72 degrees under load. The system is very quiet, in fact the PC is right next to me and I bet you cannot hear it. But if I start to export a video for example and the CPU is all the way up to 100% all the time, the fans start to kick in and the system does get a bit louder. Now this PC cost me £1300 or just under $2000 and I will make sure to leave links in the descriptions to all the components that I used. As you can see from the results, this is a very powerful PC and it can handle anything you throw at it. This is going to be my main PC and I will use it to edit videos, do university projects and also use it for gaming. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of my build and if you could change something, what would you change? Thanks for watching this video, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, links in the description. See you next time.